Hi guys, welcome to my channel and this is the part 2 tutorial. Those who are new to my channel, you can see the part 1, I'll leave the link in the description. We made this scene earlier, let's continue from here. Let's go to the cinema 4D. Now we need to create the bubbles. For that I am using X particles. By the way, this is paid plugin from Insidium. Go to emitter under objects. By default you get this rectangle emitter. But we want spherical shape emitter. Let's hide this so we can see our emitter shape. The emitter shape is bigger now and we need to fit the emitter properly inside our strawberry 3D model. Let's go to the frame 60. Here we see our strawberry start to blast. Let's adjust our emitter size to fit our 3D model. Our spherify radius is 40 cm so we need to make our emitter a bit smaller. Let's make it uh, 38 radius. Now adjust it to fit our strawberry model. I always like to use all four screens for a better view. It's looking good now. Let's hide our main strawberry model so we can concentrate more on our particles. Let's set the emission to short. and short count to maybe 2000. In the original video, the particle count is about 4000 and we can adjust it later. Let's see how it looks. Let's change the display type so we can see the particles properly. Currently we see only dots. Set editor display as spheres. Let's play. Now our particles are all same color and look a bit boring. Let's tweak it. Change it from single color to gradient parameter. And set the gradient parameter to speed instead of age. What happen is the particle which move slowly are darker blue and particle which move faster are light color so we get the idea about the animation. Let's make some changes to our emission. Reduce the particle speed to 50 centimeters and reduce the particle radius to 1.5 and add a bit of variations. Let's play and see. Mm, it's looking good but something is still missing. Currently shape is not interesting and we want some interesting and random shape. And we can achieve it with our turbulence modifier. Go to the nexus and add annex turbulence. Change noise type to war noise. Scale it down to 25 and increase its strength to 25. Ok, let's start with 10 for now. Let's play. Hmm. Not pleased with the shape. Ok, increase some strength for our turbulence. Let's play again. Hmm. 
we kind of getting there uh, let's let's add more particles go to the emitter and increase short count to 4000 Please play with the settings for your specific needs. Let's play again. Look good. Let's give a final touch. For this example, we want our particle to move towards our camera, and for that we need some wind. So we move our particles. go to the nexus and check for annex wind currently our wind is facing the opposite direction so we need to rotate it Set the wind strength to about 200 cm and add some variation. 25 is good. Let's play and see. It's looking good now. Let's tweak it a bit for a perfect result. But you can always play around with these values for a specific needs. I am pleased with the result now. Uh, we have a small issue here if you see the particles they are intersecting with each other and we don't want that for this we need to add one more modifier which is a push modifier so what this modifier do is it will push the particle and don't allow them to intersect with each other for that we need to set distance distance mode to particle radius and strength all the way to 100% let's take a look get out of the camera view and zoom to see the particles see our modifier did the job and we don't see the particle interaction Let's see through our camera. If you remember, our particle animation start from frame 60 not from frame 0 i have a cool trick for that you need to cache a simulation i always suggest you to cache to your disk i'll pause the video and get back once our cache is complete Our cache is completed now. In our original video, I didn't use the retiming method. It was just a normal playback. For this video, we will use cache retiming, and I will show you how to set up. Go to XP Cache, select Object, and go to Playback.
we want real timing on frame go to frame 0 and set a keyframe and go to last frame and set a keyframe and put the last keyframe number which is 120 this is normal playback but we can add some additional keyframe in between and make specific part faster and slower I'll show you how you can do that at the beginning I want particle to come fast so go to frame 20 in our playback setting make frame 30 so we are adding 10 keyframes extra in this way for 20 frames so we basically play 30 frames Go to frame 100 and set a keyframe. Before that, let's move our both starting keyframe at 60 because our bubble animation should start at 60. Let's add more frames. Let's move last two keyframe. To 120 frames. And now let's go to the frame 120 and go to the XP cache and make it 40 and set a keyframe. So now at frame 60, our animation will start until our frame 80 animation will be faster and from 80 to frame 120 animation will be slower as we are playing only 10 frames for the whole duration let's play the whole video and see let's unhide our problem Let's render our particle and check. Now if you render, you can't see anything because Octane require an Octane tag to render this and an object to replace these particles. Let's see how we can set up. Go to Octane and give it Octane tag. For the model which we replace with these particles, we will create a sphere. The sphere is huge in size. So let's reduce the size which match our particle size. Make it uh, 0 0.7. Let's move this sphere out of screen. Don't want to see it. Let's assign a transparent glass material. The same material which we created earlier in our part 1 video for strawberry. Let's rename it as a particle. Apply it to our sphere. Go to Octane tag. In the tag, go to Particle Rendering tab. Make it enable geometry so Octane see it as a geometry. And now put our sphere model here. And now if you render, we could see the particles. You want to see the background through our particles, so check effect alpha.
we will start rendering from frame 60. to frame 140 also add the reflection pass to our render so we can compose it in after effects if required please add motion blur and depth of field as per your requirements Our render is complete now and completed one scene in two parts. Let me know what you think about these tutorials. If you like it or not, I see very few likes and few comments and only about 600 views by the time I was recording this video. Though I was expecting much. In the next tutorial, we will create the next scene. So please my friends, like, share and subscribe to my video. Show some love. Thanks and I'll see you soon.